Hi, this is Amy from the Alti Store. Welcome to my ski cabin in Maine. I wanted to show you my off-grid solar system that I have powering my most critical of critical loads here at a ski cabin, our kegerator. So here is the solar panel that we have. We've got a ground mount because we really do not have a great roof for this. Uh, we've got an east-west, very high, very steep metal roof. And it was determined just for one solar panel, we'll just mount it on the ground. I've got it up so that it's higher than the snow level, so it will keep uh, clear. And I'll, I'll occasionally come out and, and uh, brush off any extra snow if needed. So let me give you a quick little 360 to show you the, <laughs> the challenges of doing solar in a ski cabin in Maine. As you can see, we've got the panel here. And the problem with a cabin in the woods Boy, there's a lot of trees. So we really did not have a lot of options. And if we finally got around the trees, there's actually a cliff. So we had a bit of trouble finding the, the best spot. And really just for convenience and everything else, we decided let's just have it right here on the ground beside the cabin. It's not the best spot, but we oversized it a little bit to compensate. And it was a lot easier just to run the conduit back to the house. So we've got the wire going back into the cabin. So let's go inside and take a look at that. All right, we are inside the basement and I have got my off-grid system set up here and it is powering our kegerator. So it's keeping my, my beer nice and fresh and cold and, uh, and foamy. And uh, so going to give you a nice overview of all the different components here. And we'll also figure out how we came up with the size of the system, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in and we'll get right on that. So the first thing we did to make this a creaser or a kegerator is we, we took the existing thermostat that was in here and then added a second one in series with it. So what that does is it made it very simple where the existing thermostat is still there and it's on and it's still trying to make the freezer for, freezing cold, but because we put the refrigerator thermostat in line with it, what it will do is you need to have both the freezer and the refrigerator thermostat saying yes, turn on, in order for the, the compressor to turn on. So what that does is as soon as it gets to whatever our set point is, it's going to say, okay, yep, I'm there, and it's going to open up. And so even though the freezer thermostat is still trying to make it colder, it's not going to be getting to the compressor because the refrigerator thermostat said, nope, I'm good, I'm cold enough. So that let us use a very, very efficient chest freezer as a refrigerator. So therefore, instead of a kegerator, it's actually a creaser. We also made a wooden frame inside a wooden frame with some insulation. So this is, this is several inches thick and it's got um, rigid insulation on the inside. So this allowed us to raise the top up so that we've got a higher, higher top to this so that the kegs can fit inside and it let us drill the taps through the wood and that foam insulation rather than trying to go through the, the freezer itself. So it made for a lot safer, a lot easier. And then by making a stand, we brought the whole thing up to perfect pouring location. Let me uh, show you inside here. So you can see we've got three kegs. Oh, we've only got two in there right now. So we've got two kegs in there, but we've got it set up for three kegs and some CO2. And then we've got the manifold here so that we can, we can carbonate the kegs as needed. It's a pretty sweet setup. Okay, so how did I figure out how much solar and how much battery I needed to power my kegerator? Math. I plugged the kegerator into an AC socket with a kilowatt meter, which I highly recommend everyone should get. So what that does is it measures how many kilowatt hours it uses over a period of time. I plugged it in for 113 hours and it used 1.26 kilowatt hours or 1260 watt hours. 
I divided that by the number of hours, which ended up where it used an average of 11.1 watts. And over a course of 24 hours, that was 267 watt hours. Now, to figure out the size of the battery bank, I figured in that I multiply that 267 watt hours times two for 50% depth of discharge. I wanted it to run for three days without sun. And I have it here in this basement, which is actually quite comfortable. So it's about 60 degrees. So I multiply that by 1.11 for 60 degree temperature compensation. I've also got it running through the inverter that is about 90% efficient. So I divided that by 0.9. So I ended up with 1,975 watt hours divided by my 12 volt battery meant I needed a 164 amp hour battery. So how to figure out the solar power? Well, I took that 267 watt hours over 24 hours and I divided it by our sun hours. Sun hours here are pretty darn bad. So I did it by two sun hours and I figured on losses of up to 50% because I'm getting some pretty decent voltage drop. I'm getting really, really crappy sun, quite frankly. I, I lose a lot of sun during the day. So I figured on 50% losses. So that gave me 267 watts that I needed. So I had a 270 watt panel that I used, perfect. And I've got that all connected up and it's actually doing a fabulous job. Okay, so on to the solar part of the system. Now you saw the solar panel outside. That was a 20 volt 60 cell solar panel. Now I'm charging a 12 volt battery bank. So how do I do that? With an MPPT solar charge controller. I've got the Midnight Solar Kid right here. So what that does is it takes the higher voltage from the 20 volt solar panel and it brings the output down. But in doing so, it raises the current. So because watts equals volts times amps, because with the volts coming down, the amps coming up, I'm not losing any power. Now, if I had done this with a PWM charge controller, I would be losing a lot of power because what would happen is the volts would come down to the 12 volt battery bank, but the amps would not go up. They would stay the same. So what that would do was I would lose my volts, not gain any amps, lose a lot of watts especially if the voltage of the solar panel is higher than the voltage of the battery bank, then the, the MPPT solar charge controller will get you your maximum output for the system. So let's go over the wiring that I've got. So my solar panel is in conduit coming in, goes into my DC load center. DC load center is just a fancy way of saying a DC breaker box. So the positive from the solar panel goes to a breaker. The output of the breaker goes out to the PV in positive of my charge controller. The negative from the solar panel comes in. It's just looping around and just going right straight back out. So it's not connecting to anything in the breaker box. It's just a way to come in from conduit, boom, right back out, go to the PV in negative. Now my battery out from my charge controller, the battery out plus goes to my DC load center to a breaker. The output of the breaker goes to my positive bus bar. The negative out goes into my negative bus bar. So what that does is that gives me a nice place to land everything that's going to be connected to the battery. So the output of the breaker and the output of the negative out of the charge controller they go to my battery. So also connected to that negative bus bar, just for convenience, I have a little cigarette outlet. So what that lets me do, I can charge up my cell phone for my 12 volt battery. Nice little uh, additional feature if you're doing a 12 volt battery bank. So I've got a fuse in between the, the outlet and the battery. So that's a nice safe connection there. Now I also have got going to the bus bars, the positive and the negative bus bars from the positive bus bar. I'm going to a breaker 
and I am going up to my inverter. Now this inverter is taking that 12 volt DC from the battery and converting it to 120 volts. So my positive coming from the positive bus bar to the positive in of the inverter and then it goes out to an AC breaker box to my outlet to my kegerator. The negative bus bar that's connected to the negative of the battery is just going straight up to the inverter and that takes the, the negative and the positive out to my AC. So that gives me my nice cold beer. Cheers. Make sure to go check out our website at altistore.com where we've been making renewable doables since 1999. So it's vitamin and vegemin. So it's got all the nutrition. It's got the solar. And it's so tasty too. Mmm. Just like candy.